Hey, everybody, it is Kathy with Backyard Columbus, and I am outside again recording this episode. And it is a sticky 97 degrees today, so I'm not quite sure why I'm outside, but uh, I love being outside. I'm going to be inside all week working, so why not just stick it out, right? So today's episode, I'd like to, um, I guess, offer just some ideas for you to consider about how to make the world a better place. And I'm going to dumb that way down, bring it back down to reality, because there are so many things that, I mean, there are wars and there are homeless people and there's like, there's an endless array of things that are unpleasant and sad and overwhelming. But one of the things that occurred to me that this is going to sound cheesy, but I can't change the world, but I can plant a butterfly garden. I can't change the world, but I can reduce my pesticide use. Like, do you see what I'm saying is that it is very easy to get bogged down. And what you have at the end of the day, listen, I'm going to say this. I believe in voting. I believe in writing your letters and having your voice heard and making purchasing choices choices and all the things that you can do to try to curb behavior that you don't agree with, okay, whatever that behavior is. But when it comes right down to it, sometimes there are things in this world that are way above what we can probably change. But the little things in this world can, the little changes in this world that you can make add up to great things. So the monarch butterfly, I'm going to throw this out there one more time, is that the monarch butterfly is a perfect example. We're not talking about rainforest destruction and like major things, okay? The reason that monarch butterfly populations are down is because no one plants milkweed and there are not enough nectar sources from Ohio to Mexico, from Canada to Mexico, when they make the eastern migratory monarch makes its migration. So do you see that if we all planted a milkweed and we all had one or two native sources of nectar, bam, like barring a, you know, a hurricane and forest fires and all that kind of stuff. But those little things really add up to a great big deal for the monarch population. So let's bring this back home because again, like I'm, I tried to start saying probably five times at the end of the day, what you have is your home and whether your home again is your, you can modify anything I'm going to say for a, a patio home, an apartment, a condo, anything like that. But we live in the suburbs. And it occurred to me one day that what I can do, and I'm very involved with a lot of different things that I believe in, but one thing that I can do is change my habits at home and give nature a space and a place. All right. And so even that even if that is only a little spot in your backyard, one corner or a spot along like a 10 square foot section next to your front porch, wherever you have a sunny place. It does not have to be a half an acre, an acre, five acres, a whole woods. It can literally be just 10, 15 square feet in your backyard or front yard for all that goes. But if everyone did that, it would be amazing. So giving pollinators a place, you know, birds, well, birds are pollinators, but like bees and butterflies. Who doesn't like those except perhaps if you're allergic to bees, I can see where they aren't your favorite. But let's just stick with, you know, kind of what I'm getting at here is it doesn't take a lot of space to provide a habitat for a butterfly. We're not trying to raise elephants. They're butterflies. Giving spot to a bird. So maybe you plant a a good tree, you know, an oak, a maple, something like that. So a bird has a place to build a nest. And actually, butterflies will utilize trees as well, especially oaks. But that is an entirely separate episode. Um, lower your pesticide use to none or very little. And that is the sort of thing that I'm going to reiterate this one more time is that uh, fireflies. Everyone loves fireflies. They think they're nifty. Well, most people put pesticides all over their lawn, okay, because they don't want the yucky things and they don't want crabgrass and they don't want all these things. And I do get that. But in your grass is where lightning bugs, fireflies live. And when you spray all that stuff, it's not nice stuff. It's not water. It's poison. Whether you need to use it or not, it's not even what I'm debating. It's nasty stuff and it kills most things that are in the yard. And so if you could just get by, get over the fact that your yard does not have to look like a golf course, and maybe you have a little bit of imperfection, but you get to see fireflies. You get to bring a little bit more nature 
water back into balance. So that's just something else to consider. Composting. You can argue all day long what really happens to our recycling. I have been quite discouraged myself when I see how much stuff that I, I try to recycle doesn't end up going anywhere. But what I can do in my yard is keep trash out of the landfills, so reducing that load by composting. Uh, I actually took a tour of the recycling facility here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, a little bit more riveting than you would think it would be. I thought it was very interesting, but 70% of what's in that landfill should be out of there. Whether somebody could have sold it or reused it, whether it should have been recycled, or a large majority of it could have been composted. Paper towels, napkins, shredded paper, all of the food that was grown waste, not meats, cheeses, and things like that. But the point is, you can have a very small compost bin in your backyard, whether it's in a tumble form or whether it's an actual bin and we have both and the bin actually only takes up uh, I would say 12 square feet I mean it's small the tumbler takes up less than that but then I actually make my own dirt so I don't have to buy something like that so I don't waste my money that's less energy consumption blah 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 but I can do all that in my backyard you could even do that in the patio home maybe even a condo if you have a, a little bit of a spot out back so you can see that you can carve out places in your yard to make a dent like do your part to make at least your immediate world a better place. And again, I'm always going to say, who doesn't get a smile on their face when they see more butterflies? So just things to consider how you can do things to improve the world around you, even if the world around you is only your own backyard. So I thank you for listening. If you have any questions or comments or ideas you'd like to hear about, drop me a line. Have a great day. 